I just got a, a, one more thing to say about Dr. Chandra's work. Please do. I've just been thinking about, once again, the Carolina Bays and how there's this, uh, the Venus flytrap, which doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, is inside these bays. Mm -hmm. How yeah. might that have come about? Yeah. Well, that's a good good point to segue into some discussion about the platinum group metals. Platinum group metals are a signature for an extraterrestrial event, a proxy, if you will. And this brings us back to the Younger Dryas events and the discovery of a platinum spike. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, Mikhail I. Petiev. Pet he wrote an article that it was in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences back in 2013. And he was looking at the ice cores, Greenland ice cores, at the stratigraphic level of the Younger Dryas boundary, the Alarod, the Balling Alarod Younger Dryas boundary, at roughly 12,900 years ago. And he found something. So then he says in his uh, article that appeared in PNAS back on August 6th of 1913, the impact hypothesis, once declared dead, and we've talked about some of the work that he's referring to there that did declare uh, the impact hypothesis dead. In fact, there was even one article that was entitled something along the lines of uh, you know, cosmic impact hypothesis, a requiem. No, no it's, sorry, it, it wasn't 1913, it was 2013, right? It, did I say 1913? I'm pretty sure you did. I think I did, yes. I apparently was going back to the, somewhere in the back of my mind was thinking about the great meteor procession of 1913. Yep, sorry. But that's not this that episode. Right. That's a hell of a story, by the way, and we're oh, going to yeah. get into that. Let's do that. The great meteor procession of 1913. Anyways, yeah, 2013. You know, hey, look, sometimes I get off a little bit. What's a century here? What's a century there? You know, I mean, come on, Brad, cut me some slack, man. Okay, so he says the impact hypothesis once declared dead recently gained new support from the discovery of silicious scoria-like objects. We won't get into talking about what those are right now, but we but we will because that is one of the important proxies. Um, that and 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 the, the the character of these things is this very um, consistent with them being uh, born out of a cosmic impact type event. So these SLOs or silicious scoria like objects have global distribution. And they provide strong evidence for processing at high temperatures and pressures consistent with a cosmic impact. But the discovery of the SLOs alongside, and this is the key, abundant compositionally similar microspherals at, in three younger driest boundary sites in North America and Asia is difficult to explain by anything other than a cosmic impact. We have tested the Younger Dryas boundary impact hypothesis by measuring trace and major element concentrations in ice samples from the GIS-2 ice core across the balling Alarod boundary. And then just a few highlights from his article, uh, their article actually, it was multiple, I think it was one, two, three, four authors besides uh, Patev. So what he discovered that there was a platinum anomaly right at the boundary. And he also discovered that it was accompanied by a highly extreme, extremely high platinum iridium and platinum aluminum ratios, as he says it, indicative of a highly unusual source of platinum in the ice. Materials with a high platinum iridium ratio and essentially no aluminum, which is what he found basically, are known among magmatic iron meteorites. 
until the question about the nature of the platinum rich material and the means of its delivery to the ice is resolved, an extraterrestrial source of platinum appears likely. Because one of the things about the platinum group metals is their rarity in the crust of the earth and their abundance within meteorites and possibly comets as well. For example, the platinum anomaly could be explained by multiple impacts of an iron meteorite. The main conclusion of our study is the detection of an unusual event during the Baling Alarad Younger Dryas transition period that resulted in deposition of a large amount of platinum to the Greenland ice. One of the plausible sources of the platinum spike is a metal impactor, which is interesting because that's really a very different conclusion than what some of the other, other evidence is leading to. One of the plausible sources of the platinum spike is a metal impactor with an unusual composition derived from a highly fractionated portion of a protoplanetary core. Now that to me is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. See. yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's weird that there's very little of these metals in the Earth's crust, but there's so much of it in these objects in, in space, which implies, like, what does that imply? Why Why well, should that be? For one thing, you got to understand that these platinum group metals, like iridium is a perfect example, is a siderophile. It loves iron. So it bonds to iron, right? Yeah, okay. So, so in the formation of the, of the Earth, Presumably, when the Earth was going through a, a molten or semi-molten phase, the high-density iron is going to sink towards the core. Well, it's going to drag all of the, the PT with it. See? All right. So if we could dig down to the, to the core of the Earth, we'd probably find a lot of platinum. That's why he's saying that this much platinum seems to suggest a protoplanetary core. Yeah. Like, was there a planet that once existed that then, you know, yes. somehow disintegrated Tiamat. or exploded <laughs> or, right? Yeah. So now you've got these iron-like meteorites loaded with platinum, and now we're finding that platinum in the in abundant in that layer, that Younger Dryas boundary layer in the um, Greenland ice sheet. 